today we will talk about the main features of the trends and how to use them. The ThingsBot Trends is an analytical platform that converts a IoT dataset into insights and simplifies the decision-making process. With Trends you can identify anomalies, predict system behaviors and react beforehand, find outliers and patterns fast, define KPIs using calculated fields and build report. So let's get started. I'm logging into the Trends Analytics and the Ten Administrator. This is the new installation, so far we have no data. I need to run Discover Topology to detect devices, assets and relations we have on our ThingsBoard account. I'm finished. Now the process is complete and I can start using the platform. Let's build the first visualization. To create my first visualization, I need to click on Create View and select how the visualization will look like. In my case, we select a table. On the left side, I see all the business entities found during the discover process. When I click Show Topology, I can see the relation between devices and assets. In my case, they are building that have a relation with apartment and two devices, heat meter and energy meter. By clicking on one of the assets or devices, we can see which fields are present in each entity. If I select apartment, I can see which fields are included in these assets, for example, floor, apartment area and apartment number. But the most important for us is heat meter and energy meter. Now I can start building the table. I see all the buildings that we have. Next, I select energy meter and drop the energy consumption telemetry field into the column. Now I have a two columns. First is the building and the second is energy consumption during the year. By default, it shows the summary consumption from all energy meters that are in the building. I can also choose average aggregation, maximum or minimum for example. Let's go deeper and divide the staple by months. Let's add date to the list of column and choosing the time range. Now I change the type for months during the year and I see the amount of energy consumed per month in each building. It is more convenient to make each month a separate column. To do this, I move the date to the dynamic column and the energy consumption into the dynamic value. Suppose I want a total value for each month. In that case, I have to go into the settings and select Show Total Rough. If I want to know the electricity consumption for a specific building, I can use filters. There is the possibility to select apartment state to find out which apartment we have occupied and which are empty. Now I view the energy consumption of the occupied and empty apartment. Some of the empty apartments are consuming energy, which is not good. In that case, we have to activate some notification to determine whether this apartment have energy consumption. I continue our research and add the apartment's number to our column. I view the energy consumption of each apartment and sort who has consumed more energy. So I finish with the formation of our table, so let me name it energy and save it. Now I send our table to the ThingsBoard dashboard by clicking on the button share and choosing whether to save it to an existing dashboard or create a new one. In my example I will create the new dashboard and save my table there. So now we are on the ThingsBoard dashboard. As we can see at left side we have a ThingsBoard table and the right side we have a trends table that we have created now. Now we can describe the forecast. Trends has built-in tools for time series prediction in a few clicks. All required work like data filtering, normalization and model training performance in a background. In my example, you see the blue line graphs that shows the historical data we collect over the period of time. 
Also I have a green line representing the limit I have set. In order to use the prediction, I need to do the next steps. To do that, I click on the consumption field. Now click on the checkbox next to the prediction button. As you see, an additional menu appeared and prediction methods, range and unit can be changed. Then click build report. The prediction is now shows with the dash line. Trends forecast use mathematical algorithm. We can see that will happen with our system in the near future. It also allows us to solve a problem before it happened. Beside the line chart in our example, we can see the other options by clicking on the change template in the upper right corner. Now I choose how the prediction will look like. For example, I choose line chart with the mark point. Our visualization immediately changed its appearance. Trends also has the settings that allow us to change the appearance of the visualization. You can change the title, quality parameters, colors, caching or chart options. One of the features of the trends is detection of anomalies, which are based in building machine learning algorithm. An anomaly is a time period in which a device or process behaves differently than others. Let us take a look at the process of anomaly creation. To build an anomaly, click on Create Model, select the time range, and Field. You can also add filters. For more advanced setting, I use the model properties and click on the advanced button to open an initial menu where we can change the cluster algorithm or type of aggregation. Next, I click build in model and our system begins to analyze the data to build the anomaly detection model. The first thing I observe is our calendar, which notes all the anomalies that have occurred over a creation period of time. Now I also have a table that gives me more details information about the region and the number of anomalies in them. To investigate the anomalies in detail, I will click on Anomaly Review. What I am seeing here is a red background, which represents where our anomaly has started and ended. The blue line indicates the score index of our anomaly. Under the line chart, I have a table that represents how many dates our anomaly has listed. Start, End, Cluster ID, Score or Score Index. Now it's time for trend states, a feature that tell us how much time answers spent under specific conditions. In order to build states, I use the JavaScript to set the condition that we are interested in. In my case, consumption is between 100 and 300 kilowatts. We have machines that report their current energy profile and amount of parts produced. I have configured the three conditions for our machines, low, medium and high performance. In the example 3, the machine was at high performance 58% of the time, which is not the case for machine number 1, which was at low performance 81% of the time. This allows us to find out the performance of each of our machine over the given period. With this information, I identify machines that have operation problems and as a result, minimize potential loses. With trends, I also use function to monitor and predict KPIs. Based on the input data, the calculator fields allow us to run statistical function and create new data elements by applying calculations. In this simple example, I have an apartment with the two devices, heat meter and energy meter. Both sensors report how much energy has been consumed. To create a formula, I use JavaScript. In the calculated column, we have calculated the total energy consumed by the heat and energy meter in the apartment per square meter. Let's save our table. All our saved visualization will be placed here. You can use the folders or subfolders to sort the visualizations. We call it collections. You may also mark your favorite collection by the clicking on the star and you will be have a quick access to, him, to them. Each of our visualizations that we have saved can be aided by the clicking on the actions button. You can save, remove, delete or rename. Thank you for watching.